Hello everyone, my name is Sandy Rylander and um, just a little bit of my background. I started out at UC Berkeley and then went and moved to IBM for about eight years. And then uh, about 30 years ago, started my own training company, training WordPerfect, Lotus and DOS. And uh, then quickly moved into the Microsoft Office suite. And Outlook is, uh, has become a really amazing program that can help you so much, especially if you understand some of its productivity tools. Um, that are built in. So instead of you having to spend so much time doing things, Outlook can do a lot of it for you. And that's the emphasis today is how do we get Outlook to do some of the work for us so that we don't have to um, work as hard. Now, one thing that a lot of people use Outlook for is email. And when I'm looking for a particular thing in, in an email, sometimes you have hundreds of emails from the same person or whatever. And I'm a very slow reader, so to have to look through a ton of email is not exactly what I want to do. And yet, that's what a lot of people do do. They just click up here in the search bar, and let's say I'm looking for something from Sue. So I type in the name Sue, and when I do that, notice, first of all, um, how quickly it has returned. This instant search has returned a ton of different uh, email, and notice some of them have Sue highlighted. They all actually have Sue highlighted, but some may have Sue in the body of the email as opposed to um, in the from. And so I just want to show you how you can see how many email uh, I have with Sue somewhere in the text. If you look in the bottom left hand corner, you see that I narrowed down the number of items I'm seeing in my inbox from thousands, which it was a second ago, to 250. So now if I were trying to find a particular email from Sue, I'd only have to read through 150 e uh, 250 emails to find them, which still, as a slow reader, is not exactly what I want to do. So what I'm going to do, um, I know that this email that I'm looking for is from Sue. So instead of just typing in Sue, I'm going to click on from and then type in Sue. So now that I've done that, notice that every single one of these is from Sue, which means that I've narrowed it down from 250. If you look down now in the lower left-hand corner, now I only have 77 uh, email to read. Okay, still taking me a long time. I know that the email that's from Sue that I'd like to read has attachments. Now, notice this, whenever I click in this search area, I get a whole new ribbon just for searching, okay? All of these are search criteria. Don't look for it unless you've clicked in the search box. When it first came out, I didn't, I hadn't clicked in the search box and I was looking for my search ribbon. And I was like, it's just not there. So you have to click in the search box first. Okay, so now I can just say, okay, I know it has an attachment. So I'm gonna click on has an attachment. So now I've gone from 77 email to 10. So from thousands to 250 to 10, okay? And then the last thing I know is that this has something to do with a Wednesday wisdom training that I'm doing. So I'm gonna start even just start typing in the word Wednesday and look at that. Now I'm down to two. Now that's manageable. Even as a slow reader, I can handle looking through two, okay? So this search ribbon here is such an amazing tool that a lot of people don't use that would save you so much time if you're looking for email. Now, what I've been doing is I've been using the refine feature. And the refine feature means that you're narrowing um, the scope of what you're looking for. And all of them are additive, right? So I have a lot of different options by from which you saw me use. I didn't use by subject, but I could. Um, has attachments, if I've categorized it, all of these different options, plus um, over here, there's a more. So if you're not seeing what you want to um, filter by, look at all these different options, okay? So that's all narrowing the scope of search. But sometimes you need to do just the opposite. Sometimes you need to expand the scope of search because you're looking for something, and for some reason, perhaps, Sue's email isn't in the current mailbox. I've got three different sets of email going through my 
um, outlook. And so maybe I want to look at all mailboxes, okay, which would increase the scope. Okay, so you have all mailboxes, you have current mailbox. Within the current mailbox, you also have current folder. You know how you can make several folders. So that would actually reduce um, the number of things that you'd see because you're just looking at the current folder. Or you can look at the current folder and subfolders. Okay, so just those folders that are underneath the current folder. So, or you can look at all Outlook items. I can say, okay, I want to see Sue, whether she's a, uh, let, let's take off the has attachments. Because I probably wouldn't have any has attachments in my, okay, so now I'm just looking for Sue. And in this, uh, when I say all Outlook items, I would look in my calendar, I would look in my tasks, or not I, but Outlook will. So this is super helpful. The refine is super helpful. It also saves recent searches. So if I need to find that same email again, I can click on the down arrow and click on that and it'll, it'll bring me back the two. So I think this is a huge um, productivity enhancement for anybody that works with email a lot, which is generally pretty much everyone. And that is on page 19 if you're trying to follow in the book. Um, that, that's where you would find it in my book. And if you don't have it printed out, no problem. You can, uh, it, it, I think it was an attachment in what was sent to you. Um, just as a quick reminder to people, um, you know, on your GoToWebinar uh, control panel, there is a handout section. That handout section has the PDF downloadable. Uh, if you have any trouble getting a hold of that, uh, please send us a message in chat or send me an email. I can also email that to you. It will be attached to the video uh, also. Okay, so um, the next thing I wanted to show you was the uh, ability in email to arrange by. So let's say somebody calls, let's say Sue calls and I wanna look at all of Sue's email. I can come down here in where it says all and look at all the different options I have. And what we're talking about now is arrange by or put in these kind of groupings, this kind of order. So I'm gonna arrange by from, and look, I'm already on the Sue's, but because I, right now, I'm in this feature called grouping, do you see that there's a title here that says Sue Entrman? That's called a group. It's grouping by from right now. Now, Notice that it's showing everything about Sue unless I click on this arrow, in which case it collapses up. So I could collapse each of these individually, which would take just about forever. Or whenever you want to do, whenever you want to see, hey, is there a faster way? You might want to try right clicking on whatever it is you're trying to do. So I'm going to try and right click on one of these groups and look at what it does. By right-clicking on a group, it says, hey, would you like to collapse all groups? So the first thing I did was I said I wanted to group by from. Then I collapsed all groups. And at this point, I'm just going to type in Sue and see what happens. Notice that as soon as I type in Sue, it goes straight to that group header that says Sue. So now I can click on this arrow and only see what she sent me. So if I've got her on the phone and I quickly want to see something that she's referring to and I'm not quite sure, I can scan through all her email. I can also, if I want to now, come over here and create a folder for her. I can simply right click anywhere that I want in the folder area, create a new folder, okay? And then I can drag this header over to that and create a whole Sue folder if I wanted to. Okay, you may not want to put all of her stuff in there because maybe everything is not that important. So maybe what you want to do is just click on the first item that you want and then uh, shift click if you want a whole bunch in a row or control click if you only want individual items and then drag them over. Okay, so it's super easy to create a folder and drag items in. Um, and this is a great way of, of seeing items together. Okay, so again, we came here, we clicked on the all area, we went to arrange by, 
And look at all the different things you can arrange by. So you can see attachments up at the top. You can arrange by date, importance, any of those kinds of things. Subject, size. Size is great if you're trying to clean out your inbox of big um, items. Okay. All right. So, and notice that right now, remember I said we were showing in groups. These are groups. If you don't want to show in groups, you cl simply click on show in groups and just the the little headings will go away. It'll still be sorted by name, but you won't be seeing those little headings anymore. If you want to see them again, you just come back and click on show in groups and you're good to go. Okay. All right. So I'm going to click on a new email now. And we're going to look at some new email kinds of things. First of all, what if I want to add an attachment? Well, you could just click on attach a file and now what it's going to show you is everything you've been working on recently. So if you just finished saving a Word document or an Excel document or whatever, it thinks that you might want to use them in email. So now it's as simple as clicking on this down arrow and clicking on whichever one you want. Speaking of which, if you have an attachment and you just got an email and you want to save it or do anything else with it, you now have a down arrow to, right of, to the right of it that allows you to quick print it, allows you to save it, anything like that. Also remove it. Okay, let's add another attachment. Let's say I had 10 attachments and I wanted to print them all. Um, a lot of people think that they have to print one at a time, which is a lot of time. You know, if you've got 10 attachments, that's a serious time hindrance. And you don't have to. If you just go to File Print and go to Print Options, do you see where it says Print Attached Files? So if you have 10 files attached, instead of opening up every single one or saving them all and printing them that way, all you have to do is once again, you open your email, you go to File Print, go to Print Options, and right here it's Print Attached Files. Now, notice that it says Attachments will print to the default printer only. So make sure you've selected whatever printer you'd like it to go to first, and then come in here, because you won't have a choice at this point as to where it gets sent. Okay? Okay, so back to uh, new email. Um, so notice that I have a signature block. All I did was click on new and I have a signature block showing. And I think you at NJP and I don't know about other places, but I think most people choose to have a signature block, right? And the problem though comes in, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. The problem comes in, I'm going to go to just my explorer just to see my files, right? Do you ever come to your files and pick a couple items, let's say, and say, okay, I'd like to send these. So then you just right click, right? You say right click and you say send to mail recipient. And then up comes um, an Outlook item, right? That has all your attachments. But notice that even though it has all your attachments, what is it missing? A signature block. That's a bummer, right? And so, so then you go, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll attach a signature by coming up here. And I've got two different signature blocks, one for new email, one for replies. I'm going to click on new. So now I got my signature block, but what, what happened? It has no formatting. Well, that's a bummer. And that's because Whenever you start an email, the way I just did, which was sent to mail recipient, it makes it a plain text format as opposed to an HTML format. So before putting in your signature block, you could go to format and go to HTML and all of that. Um, notice it did plain text. So I could come here, I could do HTML, then I could come back to the message and I could insert my signature. But wow, if you do that a lot, that's not much fun. So what I do is things that I need a lot and that happens to be one, I like to put on my quick access toolbar. Every single um, ribbon 
this is the ribbon, has a quick access toolbar. And so anything you want can go on there. So let's see what things we want. Well, one of the things we wanted was HTML. So how do we put that on the quick access toolbar? Well, whenever you don't know how to do something, remember, you always do what? You always right click on whatever you don't know how to do. If you learn nothing else today, that's the only really important thing is if you don't know how to do something, right click on whatever it is you don't know how to do. So I will right click on HTML and notice the very top item says add to quick access toolbar. Now, why is it grayed out? It's grayed out because it's already on my quick access toolbar, but otherwise it would be available. Okay. So let's look at something else. Let's say I wanted to add, um, let's say I do a lot of bullets. I can right click on that and click on Add to Quick Access Toolbar. It's that simple. So notice that what I did was I added HTML formatting here and added my signature here. So whenever I do something like this, all I have to do is come here, click on HTML, click on the down arrow, click on New, and I'm ready to go. So if you're the type of person that sends a lot of attachments by going to look up the files first, this is a really handy tool, okay? All right. Now, wouldn't it be nice if you, let's say you send a lot of the same email. Let's say you get a new client. And um, so you might send a new client letter saying, um, sure, enjoy talking to you on the phone. We will follow up with a letter, blah, blah, blah. Whatever it is that you want to say that, you know, uh, please feel free to call me at any time. Whatever it is that you want. Are there any of these kinds of emails that you send frequently that you send the same kind of thing? Well, if there are, then instead of you having to type it every time, wouldn't it be nice if it were just there to be selected? So to do that, we can use something called auto text or quick parts. They now call it quick parts, but I'm going to just highlight whatever it is that I'd like to use over and over again. And it could be a table. It could be a graphic. It could be text. It could be all three. Okay. And that would be under the insert menu. And then go to quick parts and save selection to quick part gallery. Now, I would never want to waste all that time when I know that if I just right click on save selection to uh, quick part gallery, I can just add it to my quick access toolbar, right? So, in fact, I've done that. It's right here. I'm just showing you where it is so that you can add it to your quick access toolbar. And I believe NJP people already have it there. I've, I think I've already done that for you guys. But if not, you just go to quick parts, auto text excuse me, save to quick part gallery, or you can also do save selection to auto text gallery. Either way, right click and add to quick access toolbar. Okay, but I already have it. So what I'm gonna do, I just highlighted the, however much text I want. I click on that. And then here I am creating my new building block. So give it a name that you will remember, it could be new client letter or whatever. And it's an auto text, which is great. And then category. Category just means, how do you want to see it grouped when you go to look for it? So I could have um, client uh, letters as one group. I could have, um, internal staff as another group. I could have whatever makes sense to you to be able to see it in a particular order. That's what category does. It just groups them. So I've created a group already called client. So I'm going to put it in that. But if that's not what I want, if I want something different, then I can click down here. I can click on create new category and create another one. So there was a quick question here, Sandy. Um, what does HTML mean as opposed to plain text? I, so 
I don't know exactly what HTML stands for, do you? Um, all I know is that HTML allows you to have formatting um, where plain text does not. Plain text will just be no bolding, no tables, nothing like that, but HTML, that's why you're seeing the, um, the blue, the different fonts and that sort of thing, but I don't know, I don't remember what each of the different letters stand for. HTML is a hypertext markup language. It's, it's basically the fundamental language that most of the internet is written on, but you're exactly right. It really just lets you have uh, pretty text and other additions like links, images, that type of stuff as opposed to just text. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Um, so here we are at create a new category. So if I wanted to create a new category here, I could. I don't really need to since I've already done that. But that category will stay there. So you don't have to keep creating it over and over again. Okay. So the rest of this looks fine. So I'm going to click on OK. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of this email. Okay, and we've got a few questions coming in here that are related to what just happened there. Um, one okay. of them is, what is the difference between the auto text gallery and quick parts gallery? My Outlook has both. Yes, your Outlook has both. And by the way, so does Word and so does PowerPoint. There's those those options are everywhere. So this is such an important tool and feature that you guys should learn how to use because it's such a great thing. Um, it's really where it's stored is the difference with, let's go to um, the insert and quick parts and auto text. So here, by the way, this auto text is where we're going to find, and I'm gonna still answer your question, don't worry that I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna get there. But under client, notice I've created several right here. And so now if this is the one I want, all I have to do is click on it and boom. So if there's any text you use frequently, how cool is that? And you can, again, you can use it in Word, you can use it in PowerPoint, anywhere you want to, okay? so. The way I'm getting that is I'm going to quick parts auto text because I saved it as an auto text. Otherwise, I'll um, there's so many different places to save it. Let me just show you. One of the things I didn't show you when I went to quick parts um, is this gallery. So you were telling me, well, what's the difference between quick parts, which is what it's telling you right here, versus auto text but it's not just quick parts and auto text it's all of these different things auto text cover pages equations footers headers page numbers tables all these different things and so what's the difference the difference is where do you go to find it when you go to bring it back so for instance a second ago um I just went, if I click on quick parts, if I had saved it as a quick part, you would see it right now. If I save it as an auto text, I don't see it until I'm over here. If I saved it as a table in the tables gallery, I would see it under quick tables. If I saved it under footers, I would see it when I went to footers. Now that wouldn't be the case, of course, in Outlook, but let me go into Word, which has a lot more places to save things. And eventually it'll appear. So the next question, which is really related, is quick parts or even these other areas. If you create them in email, do they transfer over to the other uh, Microsoft products such as Word? That's a great question. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer you'll like. They do not um, transfer. But, you know, since it is just text, you can copy, paste it into Word, and then all you have to do is save it again. But um, that has to do with the fact that uh, when I went to save it, um, notice that it's going to save it in normal email.m. And so that is available in your email where if you go into Word and do that, you're going to see that it's going to save it into your normal.m and it has not, not into your email. So yeah, they don't talk back and forth, um, but super easy to recreate. 
So let's go back to the first question though. If I go to insert, remember, remember one of the galleries was a cover page gallery. And so if I go to cover pages, then I can see the, the cover page gallery and that's where my stuff would show up. If it was a footer, I go to insert footer and my quick, uh, quick part footers would show up in footer. So it's where do I want to bring it back in from? You could save everything as a quick part and then not worry about what it, where it's stored, but that would be so overwhelming to see this list of hundreds and hundreds. It'd be a lot nicer when you want a footer to look under footers and tables to look under tables and cover pages to look under cover pages. So it's just really a way of being able to store it in a place that makes sense instead of having this huge long list. So can you use quick parts um, for subject lines? That is a really brilliant question. And the answer is no. And yet there is another feature that we're going to learn today called quick steps that is going to allow you to have a subject, a to, a body. I mean, just absolutely everything you want. So um, yeah, because if you click in subject, you'll see that you've just uh, grayed out all your quick part tools. Do you see that? So that's the problem. If you ever see them grayed out, it's because you're not in the body of your email. So you're not gonna be able to do it in the subject line. But it doesn't I think matter. That hits our that next question, which is if quick part is grayed out, how can I access it again? And it's just go back to the body, right? Yes. Yeah, because it's, it's basically telling you you can't insert something in a place you can't insert something. So it's not going to give it to you um, unless you can use it. So you have to be in the body. That's exactly right. Um, and we are going to learn about um, quick steps, which will do exactly what you're asking for. The other thing you can do is you can save what's called an email template. And an email template can do that, but I think you're going to like the quick steps um, better because it's going to be much easier for you to access than other templates. Okay. Any other questions? That covers them at this point. That covers them at this point. Okay. So notice that because it's something I like to use a lot and do a lot, I do have save selection to auto text gallery or um, on my quick access toolbar. And, um, but notice it's still gray. Why would it be dull gray? Well, it's dull gray because in order to use it, you have to have something to save. And in order to have something to save, it means you have to have something selected. You can't save something that has not been selected, right? So as soon as you select something, then all of a sudden it, it comes to life. Okay. Now, what happens? So, not, so I have two different things. I have save selection. And then over here, this is my auto text gallery, okay? And I'm gonna click on it and notice that I've got a, a category called um, client and one called general. General is just created for you. You could have everything just fall into general if you don't create any, but I much prefer creating, my, creating things. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to click on whichever one I want. And notice that they are put, by the way, before I click, notice that they're put in alphabetical order. So if you have one or two that you just use all the time and you want a full outlook into having it toward the top, just start it with a number one or an underscore because underscores and uh, any sort of symbols or numbers are going to go ahead of letters, right? So if you want them at the top, just name them appropriately. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on the one I want. But what if you did something wrong? What if, or what if you just want to add another sentence? Okay, so if you made a mistake or you add, need to add another sentence or whatever it is, then like here, maybe instead of this uh, um, colon, I want to put a period. So I'm going to delete the colon, add a period. The way to edit, because you, you really, there is no way to edit um one of your quick parts once you've created it so what you have to do is make it the way you want highlight it again and then just save it again 
Now, when you save it, you have to make sure that absolutely everything in this box is identical to how you saved it to begin with. Okay, so I have to know what the name of it was. What if you don't remember what the name of it was? Or what if you don't remember what category you had it in? Then you're going to want to look it up. And the way to look it up is in this thing called the Building Blocks Organizer. Okay, so now I'm in the Building Blocks Organizer. And it wasn't the new client letter, because that's saying, sure, enjoy talking to you. It was this one called interest. So I know the name is interest. I know the gallery is auto text. I know the category is client and I didn't touch anything else. Okay, so the name is interest. So, all right, so I'm gonna close that. Interest auto text client is what I gotta remember. Gonna go here. Oh excuse me, and click on edit properties, I was already there. Um, so the name was interest, the gallery was auto text, and the category was client. Okay, then I'm gonna click on okay. And if I did it right, then I'm gonna see, do you want to redefine the building block entry? That's a good thing, so I would say yes. Okay, if you did it wrong, you just created yourself a new auto text entry. Okay. Is that terrible? No, let's do it wrong. Let's say I thought it was interests instead of interest. Okay. I'm going to click on OK. I have one called interests. <laughs> Didn't think I did. That's interesting. I don't know why it's not under, um, why it didn't take the interest. Okay. I'm going to start over here because this should not be saying that. All right. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to save, uh, call it interests, and I'm going to click on OK. OK. So notice that I just created a new one called interests. So now I've got two. I didn't want to. I just wanted one. So again, then quick I would question, go to my question here. How do yeah. you get to that building block organizer again? That's a brilliant question because I didn't, you don't have it on your quick access toolbar, but I do. So once again, you're going to go to insert and quick parts. And actually I'm not seeing it under here, which is where I thought it would be. So when you're not seeing uh, what you want on your ribbon, which sometimes happens, then what you have to do is you have to add it to the quick access toolbar yourself, not just by right clicking. So if you want to do that, how would you do it if you didn't know how? Right click. Remember, right click is the answer to everything, or at least 99%. The question is, where do I right click? Well, since we're trying to add it to our quick access toolbar, we need to right click on the quick access toolbar, right? So anywhere, it doesn't matter where, as long as it's right, not left, right click on the quick access toolbar and look at that. Customize quick access toolbar. How cool is that? Now, the first thing you see when you come into this and we're gonna do, this is our whole next class is doing the quick access toolbar. But um, what it's showing you on the left are your choices for putting on the bar and over on the right is the bar you've already created. Okay, the problem is the choices you're seeing over here are only popular commands. And the one we want, obviously, is not popular. So what we need to do is click on the down arrow, and I just like going to all commands. That's the easiest. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the building blocks organizer. So I'm typing in a B just to go down to the Bs, and then I'm scrolling. Because if you start typing in BUI, it's going to first go to the Bs, then the Us, then the Is. It'll only accept one letter. So you can type B, but then you have to scroll. And notice right here is Building Blocks Organizer. You just have to double click to move it over to the right, and you're good to go. Is that okay? Whomever asked that question? So what I did was I right clicked. 
I went to and I said customize the quick access toolbar, went to all commands, went to the building blocks organizer and put it on. And we're going to learn how to do all of that in the next training. All right. Although you just learned uh, a little bit of it right now. Feedback there was perfect. That works. Okay, good. Perfect is always good. Um, okay. Yeah, the building blocks organizer is super important. Um, but now we still have our problem. We still have something called interests, which is correct, except that it's got poor properties. And interest, which is our old one, that's incorrect, right? So I'm going to click on interest. I'm going to delete it. But then I don't want it to be called interest. I want it to be called interest. And I also don't want it in general. I want it in client. Those are all considered the properties of this auto text entry. So in the building blocks organizer, you can edit the properties. You just can't edit the text, which is kind of strange, but it is what it is. So we're going to go to edit properties. We're going to take off our S. We're going to change our category to client. And we're going to click on OK and yes. And now we've got one called interest in client and we fixed everything. So if in advance you check to see everything in that box and make sure it's all going to be the same, great. You'll be good to go. If you mess up and now you have multiples of the same thing, you know how to fix it. Okay. So I think you'll find that to be immensely useful if there's anything that you do repetitively in your email. All right. Okay. Another nice feature, uh, since we're in our email right now, is to be able to include screen clips. Okay. Let's say I'm sending this email to Sue. And... I was looking at something in on the internet. Um, I don't know. Um, Outlook training. Ah. Okay, so let's say I wanted to show Sue this. All right. So I'm going to go back to my um, email. And if you don't have it on your quick access toolbar, you're going to go to insert. And then you're going to go and make sure, by the way, that you're in the body of the email. Because again, you can't do, you can't insert something into these lines. You have to be in the body. So I'm going to go to insert and click on the down arrow on screenshot. And notice even by clicking on screenshot, I can click on any of the screens that I currently have open and insert them right into my the body of my email, which is super cool. But a lot of times you don't want all of that. You want just a portion of your screen. So then when you go to insert, instead of screenshot, down at the bottom is screen clipping. Once again, since I do that so much, I have right-clicked on this and I've added it to my quick access toolbar so I don't have to do this each time. But I'm going to click on screen clipping. Notice, as soon as I did, it collapsed my Outlook and it went to whatever I was last looking at. What does that mean to you? It means that whatever it is you're trying to take a screen clip of better be the last thing you looked at. Because at this point, it's too late. You can't go anywhere else. Okay? This happens to be what I did want. So notice it's all dull gray, and I have these crosshairs. Now you have to be really careful. You have to make sure that your crosshairs are where you want to start, and then you want to hold your left mouse button down and drag to where you want to end. Do not let go until you've got it perfect, because you only have one chance. So I'm going to let go, boom. That easy to insert a screenshot into an email. Now, one of the areas that this is super cool, I don't know if many of you have worked with Excel and tried to copy an Excel, um, a highly formatted Excel spreadsheet into anything at all. 
But one of the things Excel likes to do is lose its formatting when you copy to different places. So I'm going to go to a workbook as it's opening up here and go to a pretty highly formatted one. And instead of having to worry about, will this come across well, all I have to do, and I'm going to go to print preview because I don't want the little um, grid lines showing. So I'll just go to print preview here. So here's my print preview, okay? Perfectly formatted, other than the fact it's chopped in half, but let's say I only want to go through April anyway, okay? So now I'm going to go back to the body of my email since it was the last thing I saw. <laughs> I'm going to look at where I have screen clip right on my quick access toolbar so i don't even have to go to insert screenshot screen clip i just click on screen clip it immediately took me to where i was a second ago again i'm going to be really careful to just drag across the portion i want let's say i just want this <laughs> let go and it couldn't possibly be more perfect okay so inserting is again this is in every application. You can do this in Outlook, you can do this in Word, you can do this in PowerPoint. So these are just amazing features that have been built into the products. This would be a good feature if you don't want somebody to be able to change what you're sending them to. Yes, so um, I, if all of you heard that, she said this would be a good feature if you don't want somebody to change um, anything that you're sending it to, of course. You can also um, send it as a PDF, which would also do that, but then it wouldn't be beautifully displayed like this in their email. So it really depends on what you're trying to do. Okay. And by the way, um, those of you who do have the book, uh, that would be on page 47, is inserting the screen clip. Okay. Um, it, uh, one quick reminder also, if, if anybody has comments there in the room, it's a good idea just to uh, repeat them as you're closest to the mic. Oh, yeah, I, that's why I did repeat yep. her. Oh, okay. okay. Great. Great. Yeah, were you able to hear? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So um, another thing that I like, um, or some people like to, I, I like to use a lot, is BCC. When I'm sending something to a lot of different people, I like to see a blind carbon copy because other people then can't copy all the email addresses that I'm sending out. There's nothing I love more than somebody sending to all, so then I can, I, I'm able to gain all these email addresses that I never had access to before. So because of that, um, that's an option, by the way. It's under options, and here's BCC, right? Um, so if you want it to always show, then you can just go to Options BCC and then it's always showing, right? But if not, then that's another thing that you might want to right click on and add to your Quick Access Toolbar because then you can turn it on and off at will. Okay. You can also turn it off, on and off at will under Options, but it's something you use so infrequently, often you forget exactly where it's stored. So that's another really nice thing about the Quick Access Toolbar is to be able to put things that you use and don't want to remember on which ribbon uh, tab it's on. Okay. Okay, so we have done, um, we've attached files um, already, right? We've inserted the attachments and that sort of thing. So we've gone to here and ins inserted attachments. But what about inserting an item? What about inserting an item like a calendar item? Have you ever wanted to show somebody what your calendar looks like? Uh, maybe just this next week so they could pick a time where you could have a conference call or whatever, but they aren't a member of your organization and you don't want them to have access to your complete calendar. If you go to attach item and you go to calendar, you can say what range, like is it the next seven days, How, whatever range you want. Let's say I'd like you to choose in the next seven days. And I can just show availability if I want, which means it'll say free or busy. Or I can have limited details like what I'm free or busy with. Okay. And click on OK. And then right in my email, it's going to show 
the person, well, I'm free here, then I've got the NTAP productive, Outlook Productivity Training, free here, then I have a meeting with Ivy. Um, so it just allows you to really quickly let a person know what your availability is and without having to say, oh, well, I've got Tuesday and I've got this, you know, it's just a really quick, easy way. And once again, I went to attach item, calendar, um, and did and just set the range. So we've got two questions here. Yeah. Um, is there any way to do these things with keystrokes instead of going to the building block organizer? So we're backing up to building block organizer. We're not talking about this then, right? Right, right. Okay. Yep. Um, so, yes. So if you're going to want to do, well, one way, uh, if you're going to want to do that, then you're going to want to be a little more careful about how you name your item. Like, for instance, instead of naming it new client letter, do you see how this first one I just named interest? So then if I come in my document and I just start typing in the word interest, by the time I get, and make sure it's more than four characters, your, your name should be at least five characters because you see when I get to the fifth character, it immediately shows you the, um, the first few words of your auto text entry. And so <clears throat> then it says, if you'd like this auto text entry, all you have to do is press enter and boom, there it is. So you can do it that way. Um, but the, you then have to remember what you called it. So it is possible, but it just, you have to remember what you named it. Okay. Um, the next one is, I don't have adding my calendar as an option in insert. Uh, the, does, um, is this uh, a, a newer version or is this a new feature? Um, whoever uh, asked that question, if you could also let us know what version of Outlook you have, that would be helpful. So, um, trying to figure out if so, it's something that's hidden or if it's something that is brand new to 2016 or. It's definitely not brand new to 2016, but so on new email, you're saying when you go to insert that you're not seeing or excuse me, on message, you're not seeing attach item. This person, whoever's asking, do you not see attach item? Um, it's, I don't have adding my calendar as an option in insert. Right, neither do right. I, but I do okay. have it under attach item, so that's what I'm trying uh, to find out. Okay. Um, oh, the, they just found it. Okay. Excellent. Um, I've got one more. Um, I tried the keystroke method uh, for the building blocks and it worked in Outlook, but not in Word. Is there a way to do it in Word as well? It should work in Word as well, but did you, first of all, did you name it at least five characters or four characters, I believe it is, it does it at the fourth. If not though, if for some reason you get through the whole word and you don't see that pop up, then right after the word, after the word that you've typed in, press F3, the F3 function key, and that should expand your auto text entry. Okay, we'll give people a second to try that and I'll let you know if we get any comments on this. So I'm gonna have this as a test. I'm gonna highlight it. Uh, I'm gonna save it. Notice I have all those same tools in words um, on my Word uh, quick access toolbar. Um, I'm going to call it tester. Click on OK. Yeah, uh, save for me. Uh, I'm typing got, tester. Uh, thanks, that screen. worked. What's that? Thanks, that worked. Definitely. OK, good. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah. I would so highly recommend doing tons of stuff with auto text. Again, not just in uh, Outlook, but I not only have the drop down generally for um, 
notice this is yours. For those of you in NJP, this is yours here. It's got um, Aberdeen header and, and those sorts of things. Anyway, um, so I not only generally have the drop down for auto text, but also for tables, for quick tables, because I often create a lot of tables. And uh, so that's this one here, quick tables. And quick tables, again, if you don't know how to get that on there, you'd go under inserting a table and quick tables are down here. You just have to right click and add to quick access toolbar. Okay. All right. So no other questions? Nope, okay. we're good. Good, okay. Um, all right. So since we're on email, um, I want to show you another way of sending an email. I'm going to go to my contacts, okay? So what happens a lot of times is maybe I'm, I'm speaking with um, Sart. So I'm going to look up his phone number because I don't know his phone number. Here he is. And now I've looked him up and he says, Sandy, could you send me the um, handout for the next class? What a lot of people would do then is they would then go to the inbox and then start typing his name or look up his address. And it's like, well, why would you do that when you're on his name right now? So if you're in contacts and you want to send something to someone, all you have to do is come up here and click on email or right click and click on email or even drag him. I can drag him from here down to email, which is over here displayed, let go and boom, got an email. And then I just have to go to attach a file and I'm done. Now, once again, notice how nice Outlook is to not give you your signature block. So all I have to do then is click on new signature. I can already tell it's HTML because this was already highlighted. I don't have that problem. I just have a problem of no, no signature block. But once again, uh, it, the other thing that's really nice is maybe you don't want to just send it to one person. So then you can just control click on as many people. Now make sure they have an email address, but as long as they have an email address, you can control click on as many people as you want and then either drag or click on email and boom. Now when I'm here, the next thing I would do, I told you earlier, is I don't like sending a bunch of people's email on the two line. So my BCC went away but no big deal because remember I put on my quick access toolbar. Then what I would do is I would just click anywhere in the two line, press control A for select all, or you can drag, but control A always selects all. And then I would just drag these down to the BCC. Do you need anybody in the two? No, just leave it blank. And that way everybody still gets your email, but they don't get everybody else's email address which I think is sort of an invasion of privacy. But if you want them to respond to this email, you want your name to be in the two for when they reply. It's always you. When they reply, it will be to you. Oh, okay. There will be no option other okay. than being from you. It's yeah, okay. yeah, you don't have to worry about that. When they reply, and that's the other nice thing, is if they do a reply all, all these people aren't going to get that reply all. So if they're really angry at you for some reason, <laughs> they're not, it's only going to come to you. So that's a good thing. Okay. The other thing that I like about sending email from contacts, and we're going to learn how to do this in a, in a minute, but I really love to categorize my contacts. That helps me so much. For instance, I have um, clients. I have law clients. I have um, friends. I have, I have all sorts of different things. So instead of looking at the card list, which is what I normally keep it on. Now you guys may have it on people. I don't know. Or you may have it on business cards. All of those for me waste too much space. So my favorite is just plain old old fashioned card list. Except there are times that I just want to see a list. So if you're not seeing it here, you can either click on this down arrow or to see everything, you can click on the lowest down arrow. And there should be one called list. 
And my list shows categories. So here, B client stands for business client. BL client stands for business law client. Once again, if I want to collapse all these up, all I have to do is what? Right click. Where? On the group. So I'm going to right click on the group so that I can collapse all groups. So here you can see some of the different groups I have. Um, people who rent my seaside timeshare, Wapto, Whistler, whatever, restaurants, all these different ones. Now I have B's in front of business and P's in front of personal only because I want them sorted together. Okay, just do what you have to to make sure things are sorted together. Now notice that not only can you give a category a name, but you can also give it a color. So notice all my business ones are orange, all my personal ones are blue, and then I've got a weird one here for the YWCA luncheon, but, but here are some of my colors, okay? So what? why is this nice? Well, look at this. I've got one called holiday cards, 158 items. Come holiday time, I can just click on all the ones that have an email address. Some of them obviously don't, I need to get those. But let's say they all did. I just do that, click on email. Because a few of them don't have an email address, it's giving me this error message, I'll just click on OK. Then I'm gonna take all of these and move them down to the BCC, and then I just add my holiday newsletter right there, and I am done with my Christmas cards for the season. Now, is it as personal? Maybe not, but it's quick, it leaves no carbon footprint, and at least they get information about me once a year. <laughs> so, um, but it's great if you have a technology group like this and you want to send something to the technology group, how much nicer is it to be able to just go to that group and send it versus having to each time pick who you want, okay? So how do you do that? Well. Um, let's go back to, instead of list, let's go back to card. And let's say I'm working with uh, this person. Just double click to open up. Notice that I've already put holiday card and friend as my two categories. You can put as many categories as you want. But notice up here, it says categorize. Click on that down arrow. Here are some of the different categories that I have. Not all of them, but some of them. So when you first start with this, if you haven't used it before, you're going to see maybe four or five categories, and one's going to be called green category and orange category and blue category. Completely unhelpful, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to then click on all categories. And if one is called, let me see if I left one of those. I usually try to, but obviously I didn't, but if one of them is called green category, you can just click on it, click on rename, and rename it anything you like. If the rename comes up, I don't know why it's, oh, wait, there we go. So I don't know if you can tell, but this um, is now something I can edit. See that? Which I don't want to, but if I did. So rename allows you to rename right in place. Um, again, you only have four or five of those, so that's probably not going to be enough. So the other thing you can do is just click on new. When you click on new, you can give it a name. Like let's say I want one for everybody who works at NJP. I can type in NJP. I can pick whatever color I want. <coughs> Look at how many colors you have. You have five by five, that's 25 colors. And I have more than 25 categories. So when I started out, I thought, darn Microsoft, you're not giving me enough colors. And why don't you give me more options? Well, so I started assigning a different color per category. And what I noticed was when you do that, you just made the categories completely useless. How many of you can remember what 25 different colors mean? I can't. So then what I did was I decided, no, what I really needed to know was what are my business ones? What are my personal ones? What are my holiday ones? You really can't remember more than 25. So 25 colors is more than enough, okay? So assign whatever color you want. If you want a shortcut key, you can do that. And then just click on okay. And now you've just created a new category. 
That's how easy it is. I'm going to take the check mark off because this person is not an NJP person, so I don't want it to be checked. But that's how easy it is. Now, if so I want a, a quick question here that goes back just a little bit, um, how do you get to contacts and business cards? Okay, so you get to contacts over here. So here's email, calendar, contacts. So I clicked here on contacts to get to contacts. And then up here where it says current view, this is where you get to choose um, like people view or business card view or card view or whatever view you'd like. Did that work? Yes. Great. All right. Now I double clicked on this person to go to um, categories, but I don't need to. I can just right click and go to categorize. And notice the ones, notice this one and this one look like they've been clicked because they have. Those are the ones that are currently assigned to her. So if I want to add another one, I can just click on whichever one I want. Now, the only thing is when I click on one, it's going to go away. So if I want to add another one, I need to then click on it, right click again, go to categorize and do it again. So if I want to assign multiple categories, then I still like going to all categories because then I can just check off as many as I want. Also, this is a complete list of my categories where when I right click, you probably saw that I only get a certain number. So if you're not seeing one of the categories you want or you want to add a lot of them, just go to all categories. Now, you don't have to just add categories one at a time. You can add it to as many people as you want. So if I say, okay, this person, and then I'm just going to control click on this person and this person and this person, now, if I right click and go to categorize, I can assign it to all those people at the same time. Okay. Any questions on that? So categorizing, I think, is really nice. Now, come holiday card time, I like to just be able to click on holiday cards and just see those people. That's interesting. Okay. Oh, I must have taken holiday cards. Um, we'll look at this one. This is only showing those people who I am going to invite to a New Year's party. Okay. So these are all and list. Remember, it had categories. These are all different views. And you can create as many different views as you want. So you can say, gosh, you know, I don't like the look of this. I mean, first of all, I've got file as up here. File as is how are you filing it by last name and first name. Okay, that's what most people have as their file as. But you could file as by business or whatever you want. But here I've got last name, first name. And over here I have full name. Do I really need the name twice just turned around? I mean, maybe so. But if not, I can get rid of full name simply by dragging it down off the screen, and now I have file as and now email. Maybe I don't want email next. Maybe I want job title. I simply drag this over, and now I've got job title there. Just drag it to where you want. Notice as soon as it's in the place where I want, see that little down arrow that's telling me that I am in the right place to drop it, and I drop it. If I drag too far off, it's going to say, hey, you must want to get rid of it. What if there's one that I'd like to see, but I'm not? Let's say I'm in charge of birthdays in the office and I'm not seeing birthday. How would I see that? Right click, where? Right click on whatever it is you're trying to do. You're trying to add another heading. So I'm gonna right click on the headings and I'm going to say, I'd like to, these are called fields. I wanna choose another field. Hello. Oh, here it is. I couldn't see it for some reason, but right here it is. So I'm not seeing birthday here either. Why? Because it's not a very frequently used field. So I might have to come up here, go down to all contact fields that I for sure will see it. 
I can put anniversary, I can put birthday, I can put children, I can put whatever it is that you'd like to see, maybe a second email address, home address, anything you'd like to see. All you have to do is, let's go back up to birthday, just drag it up, let go. And it shouldn't take this long, but... <laughs> Not sure why it's hanging up, but it should just drop it right there and hopefully it will not crash on me. But anyway, so that's how easy it is to modify a view. There we go. It usually doesn't take that long, but so here we go. We can start seeing birthdays. Now, if I'd like to see them sorted by birthday, I can click on birthday and it will sort by that. So now it's bringing the birthdays up to the top. Okay. Whatever I want to sort by, I can just click on. First time it's going to sort it ascending A to Z. Second time descending Z to A. Okay. Now, let's say you like this. I'm going to get rid of my field chooser. You like this. Um, but you'd like to have it be called, you'd like a new view called birthday view. Just like you saw me over here, I had holiday card view. So if I want to have a new view called birthday card view, then you just go to view. And we're going to go to, uh, not view settings, because view settings going to change, allow us to change uh, the current view. But I'm going to click on change view, but it's not. I don't, something's wrong here. Um, so there was there was a quick uh, comment here and then a question. Um, the comment was, uh, you might want to make it clear that in order to add some tools, uh, like the Builder Block Organizer, to your quick access toolbar, you have to have an email oh, yeah. open and add it to the toolbar and not to the main Outlook quick access toolbar. Uh, for this individual, the tool wasn't available when they tried to add it without an email open. Yes, thank you, person that said that. So, you know, in, um, in Excel, in PowerPoint, in Word, all of those programs have only one toolbar because the only one is needed. Um, Outlook is the only place where it doesn't make any sense to have email options in your calendar or calendar options in your contacts, etc. So um, Outlook is one of the few places that you do want to make sure that if you're working with email, if you're working with a new email, you want to click on new email and then create that quick access toolbar. If you're working on an existing email, you need to open up an existing email and work with that quick access toolbar. So just make sure you are where you want to be because the options in Outlook only will be only where appropriate. Okay, so the next question is here. So to get to field chooser, um, then you go where to create birthdays? Um, so, so I'm going to take birthday back off uh -huh. and to get to field choose, I don't know, that was a really stupid thing to do. I didn't think it would be that long. Okay. But anyway, so I'll explain it while it's doing its thing. You just, to get to field chooser, what I did was I right clicked on any of these field names and then I said field chooser and then birthday. I don't know if you remember, but once I got to field chooser, I had up at the top, I had a little drop down list that said frequently used fields. Yay. Well, that wasn't as long. So field chooser and see how, um, well, now it's saying all contact fields. That isn't normal. Normally, it would have frequently used fields as the default. And so what I did then was I, went, I clicked on the drop down arrow and I went to all contact fields right here. 
You could also, I think there's like personal fields. I think birthday would be under personal fields as well. There we go. So if you don't want to have to look through this huge long list, which all contact fields is, if you know it's a personal field like that one is, then, then it's right there. And then all I did was drag it from here onto into this area. And I'll drag it, but I won't let go because I don't want to have it delay so long again. But that's all I did. Uh, next question related to birthdays also. This is a clearly popular one. Um, birthdays, is there a template or feature in Outlook Calendar that will allow me to add like balloons or some other visual indicator to show those dates when I put them on my calendar? Like when I post an employee's birthday on the shared office calendar, I'd love to have some art or some way for people to visually see that. So, excellent question. Um, except no, uh, there's no art, but what there is, which I love um, and use myself. So, I like using colors. Again, colors are associated with categories. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click on my month view. And look at this, Maggie Harlow's birthday. Notice it's gray. Alec Van Zyden's birthday, Bridget, Brigitte's birthday. All of them are the same color. All my work appointments are the same color. All my important things are the same color. And instead of you having to mark them, so you can just say, so for me, anything that I put B-Day or birthday or, um, or anniversary, because I color my anniversaries gray also, um, anything like that will automatically turn that color. Anything I start with B colon will automatically turn that color. So how do I do that? Well, that's, again, it's under view, which is where we were just a second ago. And in this case, since we're not creating a new view, we sort of got off track on creating a new view, um, which I'd like to go back to. But anyway, I'm going to go to view settings. And this is conditional formatting. Love using conditional formatting for my uh, calendar. So I go to conditional formatting and I can create as many different items here as I want. I'm going to show you birthday. This is just its name. It doesn't do anything. It's just for you to know that's what its name is. Okay. But I'm going to show you what I did for birthday. The name is birthday. I chose a color. You can choose any of 25. I would choose as transparent a color as you can because the really dark, bold colors are going to be make it hard for you to see the text. Does that make sense? Okay. Try it. You'll know. Uh, but then the most important part of this whole thing is condition. So condition is where I said, if you find B-Day, birthday, or anniversary anywhere in the text, color it gray. Okay. I have one called work and I the condition there is B colon and I typed in B colon because otherwise anytime I type in the letter B it's going to think it's a work item so if I say lunch with Bill it's going to think it's a work item so the colon is there just so that it's unique okay um, Children, anything having to do with my children, I want to be green. And I've got four, so I've got their names in here. Hayden, Carly, Nicholas, Alex. Anytime I type those in, it'll be green. So that does mean if I have lunch with somebody named Carly and it's not my daughter, it's still going to turn green. But hopefully you'll know when you're having lunch with your daughter as opposed to a different Carly. So I don't worry about that. Okay? So those are all. So all you have to do. If you want to create your own conditions, so for birthday, if I didn't have one already here, I would just click on add. Notice it gives me an untitled one. I'll call it something a little different so that I know which one is which. Give it a color. If you want it to be real exciting, you can make it yellow or red or whatever you want. I like to keep red for important items as opposed to birthdays, but it's up to you. Go to condition and then here, Whatever is going to make it a birthday that you're going to type in, type that in here. Okay, now, um, 
and it will apply it to all the ones that are already on your calendar as well. Okay. Now the thing is, the person looking at it, well, if it's a if it's a global calendar, if it's a group calendar, they probably will see it. If they don't, they may have to do the same thing you did to create that same color look. Does that make sense? So, um, so if they're not seeing your colors, they may have to create one called birthday with that color as well. It just depends what kind of a calendar it is. Okay, any questions on color coding your calendar? That is on page, I think I wrote down is on page 20 in your handbook, but it has a table of contents so you can look, look at it yourself. Okay, so back to contacts. I was trying to show you how to create new views. Um, everything having to do with views is going to be under view. And under, uh, under change view, Notice there is a, well, I could save my current view as a new view. So if I, I just want to save this and call it birthdays, I could. But if I want to go to manage views, then I can actually go to any of these views and I can copy them, which would give me all the same features and then make any changes I want. I could create a new one, which means I'd have to create it from scratch, which is always more difficult. So I really like, if I loved this look, but I just wanted to add birthdays, then what I would do is I would be on current view settings. I would click on copy. I would give it a new name, like birthday. And then I would decide, do I want this to be available for all my different contact folders, assuming I had more than one, or just this folder visible to just me or this folder visible to anyone who has access to my calendar or excuse me contacts so you decide what you want click on okay and then if what you want is to have birthday in there that would be uh, columns notice I don't have birthday in there yet so I would have to instead of frequently used fields I'd go down to my all contact fields and I'd go to birthday now, if I just double click on birthday, it's going to go all the way to the end. So if I want birthday to be right after file as, then it's a lot easier for me to just click on file as and then double click on birthday and it'll go right underneath file as. And click on OK. And OK. And apply view will mean that as soon as I'm done, it'll show me what I just did. Or I can click on OK, which will be back here, but I'll still have something called birthday. I'm going to click on Apply View, and boom, there's my birthday. And now I have a new view called Birthdays. So you can create as many different views as you want. Okay? There we go. There's birthday. Kind of cool. So just a, a quick reminder here, we've got about nine minutes left. If people have any questions, please post them into the question box. Um, if we don't get any questions, we'll continue on with content for the last few minutes here. Should I? I'm deleting this new view because I don't want it. But um, are you getting any questions or should I continue? Go uh, continue. Okay. Um, there is one general one, which is, uh, could you talk a little bit about tasks? Um, I could, but before I do that, I would like to back up for a second because there was a question before that, um, which I think would be really helpful to all of you, which is, um, remember when I was showing you how to create quick parts, one person asked, what about the subject line? Um, could, could I have a subject line and all of that as well as a body? And I said yes, but not through this, but rather through quick steps. So remind me, I will go back to answer the other question, but let's quickly look at quick steps because it's so helpful. What quick steps allows you to do is to click on an item. Um, this is not what I want here. I want, whoops, let me just go back to arrange by date. 
and show in groups. Okay, great. Uh, all right. So let's say I've got a number of items that I would like to take everything like um, that I've got highlighted, maybe these two, and I would like to store them in a folder called SART, and then I'd like to delete them, and then there's many things I'd like to do with this, but all of them require separate steps, right? Well, instead of you having to do each of those steps, wouldn't it be nice if you could just tell what steps you want to do and then just click on whatever that is? So I created one called NJP Training, and that one is one where it's going to create a new email to the two people that I decided to send it to. It has my subject line, and it also has the body. So all I have to do is training on um, quick access toolbars, which is what we're doing next time, okay, and then type in the date and type in the time and type in the place and hit send. Isn't that cool? I think that will save you a ton of time, okay? So that isn't the only thing Quick Steps can do. Like I said before, it can move, it can copy, it can do anything. So they start you out with a bunch of different Quick Steps. I think this one was called, I know this one was called To Manager before. So it said, okay, I'm going to set this one up for you so you kind of get a clue as to what how to do it. But, so I'm going to, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. So if I want to uh, do anything with Quick Steps, I'm coming here to the bottom right corner here and clicking on More. And this is how I could create one from scratch if I want. Or I can look at any of these, or I can manage Quick Steps. So if I want to edit the one that you were just looking at. So I'm going to click on Manage Quick Steps, and I'm going to look at NJP Training. And I'm going to click edit. Okay. So in my quick steps, the first thing I do is give it a name, which is what it appears here. And then this is the first step. For this first step, I said I wanted a new message, but it may not be what you want. If not, click on the down arrow. <coughs> you could move to a folder, copy to a folder. These are all the different things that you can do. Because I selected new message, then I went to um, show options, and under options is where I could type in whomever I wanted to send it to, what I wanted for the subject, whether I wanted a flag or importance if I wanted to be high priority, and what I wanted for my text. Now, if that's all, and then here, um, I know Brian asked earlier about shortcut keys. I could create a shortcut key here if I wanted to be able to. <clears throat> you have nine different shortcut keys that you can assign. Mm -hmm. And if you want a little tool tip, although if you call it something, you, you might not need to. But here under my tool tip text, I called it new training alert and I hit save. Okay. So that's what I have for. Um, for a new message. But that isn't the only thing I can do. I can add another. So my first action was a new message. I could add another action if I want. And by adding another action, I could then do any of these things. And I can just keep adding more and more actions. Like a second ago, I said, let's say I want to forward this. Then I want to delete it out of my current mailbox. You know, whatever it is that you want to do, you can add tons of actions. So take the time to play with this because it's super powerful. Look at all these different things that you can do. You don't want to delete it first if you want to do something else to it. You don't want to delete it first if you want to do something else to it. Yes. You do need to put it in the order that you want it to happen because once you've deleted it, it's gone. Yes. Well, I just noticed that was an option in the first part. So. Yeah, the option is anytime. All the same actions will always be shown at any time. So you want to make sure that you put them in the order you want here. And quite honestly, I'm not sure that deleting something is all that wonderful to put in a quick step. But this is quite wonderful. Okay. So, um, 
So take the time to learn a little bit more about Quick Steps. It's in my handout, a very, very powerful feature, and just play with it. But like I said, they, they give you lots to start with so that you can not have to start from scratch to begin with, okay? Okay, start. what was the um, other question that I need to get back to before we're out of time in two minutes? Oh, tasks. Tasks. Okay. So tasks, um, unfortunately, tasks are not shown right here, so they're in my triple dot. Um, so I can click on tasks. Now I can move them up here if I want to. It just depends on how much you do. Um, so here are my tasks. A couple different ways of creating a task. One is to click on new task if you want and type absolutely anything you want, um, including your start time, due time, status, if you want to update, uh, whether you want a reminder or not. All of these are your different things, um, subject. And if you want to have somebody else do the task, then you can share the task and assign it to somebody else. But assuming it's just for you, so new task is one way of doing it. But another thing, do you see where it says click here to add a new task? You could just click right there and say study outlook and hit enter. You could hit enter or you could go across here and add a category, just do any of those kinds of things. Okay, but I can press enter and it becomes more of a stream of consciousness, add as many things as you want on a task. So if SART gave me a task to do, I or I just decided this is something I need to do, I can just drag him right on top of tasks and boom, it auto creates a task for me. So that's a really cool thing to do. And not just tasks, if I don't have him in my contacts, I can just drag him right on top of contacts and boom, it'll auto, auto create a contact for me. So. Just wanted to throw that in. I know it, we're, our time is up, but there's my contact. Here's my, it, it has his email, everything in it. And if he had a signature block, I could just drag the signature block information in there too. So real quick way to create a contact. And I will now say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you.